Well, here we are. This is Manny Matsakis, and I have a um, special guest today um, that is arguably the premier specialist coach in the world, as I see it. There's nobody even in this guy's league. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I'm going to go along here and explain why that is the case. And, um, you know, when you look at this guy here, this is Paul Assad. And um, I want you to understand just who he is and what he has been able to accomplish in his career. Now, he, he had started out as uh, primarily a soccer player and uh, had some injuries and really wanted to kick, uh, you know, you know, in, in football. And um, he just has the keenest mind for uh, mechanics uh, regardless of what the sport is, I have never seen anybody that approaches uh, his uh, his expertise in that specific area. But he is the kick doctor. I mean, he is the the guy that when you think about all these great kickers out there in the National Football League, I mean, he takes it to another level. He works with some of the best, some of the best in the business. Uh, you know, here's a guy right here. You know, maybe the best ever, Sebastian Janikowski, who knows that that right locally in his area, Paul has been there. And whenever he would struggle, he it was it was just give Paul a call. He'll come in and fix it. You know, so, you know, you start to look It's a who's who of the guys he has worked with. You know, you got a guy like Matt Bryant, who's who's also one of the best you know kickers in the league. You know, Billy Cundiff, the list goes on and all. James Tudhill was fantastic, and he has worked with so many good guys. And it's not just kickers and punters, but also long snappers, which we'll have some time somewhere in this in this show to talk about long snapping specifically. So I wanted to let you understand this is who Paul is and what he's all about. And um, I'd like to take a minute now and uh, introduce you to Paul Assad. Hey, thank you, Manny. I appreciate you having me on the uh, on the show. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a great ride uh, so far. Thank you for all that. Uh, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Not your agent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. You're thank you. Beautiful. Glad to be here. Yeah, well, you know, Paul, it's like we go way back. Uh, I know when I was uh, coaching with Mike Leach at uh, Washington, he's at Washington State now, and we were in Lubbock at Texas Tech. Uh, he hired me to come in and be the uh, special teams coordinator. And schematically, I'd done that for Bill Snyder. It wasn't, you know, that part wasn't the difficult thing, you know, putting a pump protection gear and all that stuff. What was the most difficult thing for me was teaching kickers, punters, long snappers, the mechanics. And you think, well, how can that be? You know, because I was a former kicker myself. You know, right, uh, right. but as I want to take a second and show you here, um, you know, this is a game ball I got in college. OK, right. Uh, what's that? 1981. So that's September 12th. <laughs> you know, I hit a 54 yard field goal against uh, that was for capital where I played against Marietta. OK, so, hey, I got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. But here is. This is when the mic drops, so to speak. I'm the last straight on kicker drafted in the National Football League. And there just aren't any more of those guys out there. So I had to find a solution. And you came to the rescue without, without question. And, and that's why we have had a bond um, ever since that, because it's like Paul comes out to Lubbock. And he's teaching me and also my brother, who is an intern, Louie, who is now a uh, special teams coach at uh, University of Kentucky in the SEC. You taught us how to coach kickers and punters and all the things that like I didn't understand any of that. It just didn't make any sense to me. You know, and I had, I had a just totally different career path. You were the best back then. And this was in the early uh, 2000s. And so we got to be friends. You came out and helped us out. And literally, you saved the day um, for Mike Leach 
and the Texas Tech Red Raiders in so many ways that uh, a lot of the Red Raider fans have no idea that uh, sometimes when we're going guns up, it was uh, it was because uh, you came in and fixed some stuff that we couldn't fix. I'll be honest. So, you know, I I have to thank you for that, and and I I want to take let you have the mic here for a little bit and tell me a little bit about how you got started in this industry. Well, thank you very much. I, I think, you know, the kicking game is is more often overlooked and it's the last thing that a lot of coaches address trying to get their offensive and defenses, you know, and the, their whole teams in order. And then, hey, we'll get to that last. We got to score first mentality. But, you know, the attitude that I've tried to, to have and communicate with coaches is that the kicking game brings so much more than they would have earlier thought when you start considering field position you start thinking about the types of plays you will or will not call on offense and defense and everything comes down to our strategy and where we are on the field so the kicking game is bigger than I think a lot of young coaches think and the higher that we go up the you know the greater we start seeing the importance of that but um, getting back to your question, my background with this is here. I'm a, uh, I started off as, you know, a young man as a golfer and a baseball player transitioned into uh, becoming a soccer player, um, earned scholarships um, into college. I played two years of junior college soccer at Modesto junior college um, league honors, the whole thing. But I just thought, you know, let's, let's give this a, let's give this a good chance. So I didn't even, start kicking football until junior college. I ended up as a walk-on at Sacramento State, um, was lucky enough to play on one of the greatest teams in school history. Um, uh, under uh, Bob Matos and Greg Knapp was my special teams coach. He's still, and has become a very successful long time NFL coach. Um, I could tell that he was gonna be a great coach. That was his first coaching gig, by the way. Um, he was a grad assistant, having been the quarterback the year before. So <laughs> kind of neat, you know. And so we all kind of grew together. And I'll say this, you know, I, I've always encouraged my young man uh, that I coach and help kickers, punters, and snappers to try to play college football if they can. If it's not to earn a scholarship, uh, at least experience what it's like to have the team camarader camaraderie and just the brother hood of what football and all sports bring the i'm still great friends with those guys i played with today and we all communicate uh, even better on social media thanks to social media when it's used the right way but i just think that um you know whatever i can do to bring you know my philosophy has been let's look at more of the universal movement of all sports and see if we can apply that towards our kickers and our punters and our long snappers and not just teach it the way it's always been taught. So I don't teach exactly what I used to. I try to, you know, continue to learn. I made that commitment when I first started doing it. Uh, me as a player, I end up with a, a few cups of coffee, you know, in the, in the NFL with some teams, uh, more of a mini camp guy, training camp. And uh, just tried to keep uh, learning as I went, you know. And uh, what I did is uh, with, I met a guy named Joe Prokop. I uh, punted the NFL for a long time and on a lot of different teams. And he was a uh, lead scout for Scout Camp. Which oh, yeah. The NFL, I remember them. The NFL has purchased, and now it's called the NFL Regional Combat. Okay. And so there was some success there. I want to say most of the signings were for the kickers and punters, actually, mm -hmm. back then at least. And what that did is he, he it gave us an opportunity to see a lot of guys. So Joe, Joe knew a lot about punting, but he didn't know a whole bunch about kicking. So he asked me to come in and, and, and evaluate the kickers. Mm -hmm. and, and then eventually I, I ended up as the national director. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm, I'm studying long snapping as well. And, and here we are today, some 250 signed in the league and 50 starters later, I think. Wow. Some of the guys. Yeah, so we've had some success. And That's remarkable. You know, thank you. And I think, you know, that's attributed to the guys that, that came through uh, were gifted. They were good. They were willing to look at new ways to kick and punt the football. Um, you know, I have a story uh, I met with. Uh, first round pick Sebastian Janikowski and Shane Leckler 
um, when they came in and I, I asked them this question. I said, look, do you, would you want to play a long time and just, you know, see how long you can play? What's our goals here? Or do you want to play and just try to be the best there has ever been? And that might mean, you know, uh, not everybody understanding what you're doing, but I just want to, the reason I'm asking you guys this question is uh, if, if I'm going to be your coach, I want you, you have to uh, listen to me. So we need total trust. And mm-hmm. so we're going to do some things, especially at that level, because that's when the new things happen and we pass those down the line and hopefully the young guys do that. So what I've done is uh, I'm here in my 22nd year um, of running my own program. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. Wow. Flew by. I think my 34th year of coaching. I don't know how I got that old, but the, the uh, you know, the things that I'm trying to pass on uh, are the things that have worked and the things uh, that we could do better continually. And so uh, work in progress always. But these days, I'm, uh, I've got a few guys older, but I'm trying to focus on players that are a little bit younger, maybe the high school, the junior college level guys, and just move those guys up, teach them mm-hmm. the, the principles that have worked. I think they're old enough and they're getting strong enough to be able to do some of the, the postures and the techniques. And sure. uh, that way I'm not reteaching them after their senior year in college, which was always the case. And yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been yeah. great. Yeah, and and not only do you do that, I had alluded to it before. How sometimes that's why, in my mind, the kick doctor is like the perfect name because you come in and get people people healthy kicking the ball. It's uh, it's amazing. You know, there's so many stories uh, that we can tell, but you know, I can't count. I mean, there's numerous times you would come out to Lubbock, or you'd show up in Austin, and we had a game or College Station. And uh, it's, our our field our kickoff guy is you know he's he's putting it on the goal line and and it's not deep enough. We're worried about returns and and so uh, what do you do? Come in five ten minutes max and and the dude's banging it five yards through the uprights on the other side out of the field. I mean literally almost putting it in the cheap seats and it's like ten minutes you fixed it and it's like the thing that I don't know that coaches completely understand is the actual process that's involved that chain reaction in kicking punting long snapping and golfing baseball swinging a bat all the different things that happen are truly a kinetic chain and you have been able to master it and see it and fix it faster than anybody i've ever seen and and that i think is your edge and where some guys can go someplace and think, hey, I've got to train with a guy forever, they can come to you and get fixed, and then you can keep working with them over a long period of time to take them where they're in their mind, they don't even know how good they could be. And that's what's amazing. And I think that's the gift you have for our profession is, is, is helping us as coaches understand what that is because you got to dumb it down for football coaches. I'll be honest. <laughs> that, that's really how we are on this in this process. And I just want to know, you know, what is the process when you see something and you got and you need to fix it? What goes through your mind and and to to get it fixed right there because it's different than anything I've ever seen. Well, thank you for that. Well you know, the first thing, you know, it's, it all starts with the philosophy, just like, you know, any other good offense, a good defense, you know, the technique that I teach these days is called the power X. If I was to give it a name and it is really built on the fundamentals of, you know, balance, technique, sequence, leverage, all those principles that we understand and uh, applied in other sports and the the science of sports. So now we're just putting that into use with kicking and punting. So I think, you know, when it comes to the, you know, the kicking and punting snapping, it's not a get, you know, it's not a quickie solution so much. I don't want it to sound like that. I think it'll work best when a player understands, you know, all the elements of what you're trying to do. So when I look at a player, I want to look at his, say, his hand speed or his foot speed. I want to see 
uh, not necessarily what the outcome of the ball flight is at first. Uh, I want to look at his motion, his tendencies, and then secondary, I'll, I'll look at, okay, now what if he was doing it right? So, we're, you know, when I scout a guy or if I'm observing a player, I try to see the player that he could be. And usually, uh, you know, they could be a lot more than, than they were. So when I was the director of, you know, a scout camp, uh, I got to see a lot of guys, but they might have just been, a, you know, an adjustment here or there off. Now, what's the right adjustment? So it comes down to a few guys in the world being able to, like, pick out those solutions. And then when it comes down to helping coaches, that's my favorite coaching, and I do a lot of that these days. Uh, I think that you're not giving them enough credit or you're being modest, but guys are pretty smart, I think. But the the idea would be uh, let's create a system that makes sense to guys that they, so when they're watching their guy, they can see, okay, I see what his footwork is. I see short step, big step. I see where the feet Mm -hmm. are supposed to go. I see where the posture is supposed to be when he does it right. So most good coaches, even if they knew nothing about kicking and punting, Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to be able to see like the ball flying off a guy's foot or really good snap. We hear it, right? (laughs) Yeah, we can hear it. And you can tell when he does something different usually. So we want to get a guy back on track usually pretty fast. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my deal has been always let's start with the ground and work our way up. Okay. And so that's really the philosophy of everything. And it always, we always go back to that. We're always going back to what what's going on with our footwork, where's our posture, and then lastly the sequencing and the, and then we can improve on the speed and things once we have our basics. And so when you see a guy's ball suddenly jump ten or fifteen yards greater, he's doing the other things. And I think probably I was able to just tell him something and it clicked. Yeah, you know, and, I've seen and, and he got it, it firsthand. So, yeah. As we're coaching them, you know, we want to create these aha moments where you're not just giving them the answers. I'm constantly finding myself trying to lead them, and I want them to finish my sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. That, that, That's really amazing. You know, over the last couple decades, Paul, it's like you've come up with some key concepts some really amazing ideas in teaching. You're always like pushing the envelope, envelope. You're working on the edge of finding what I call profound knowledge, that key information that just makes it click, you know, whatever that is. And I really like to know, like, where where do your best ideas come from? Is it like in the shower or something? I mean, how do you? <laughs> I think you know. I'm. Uh, it might be hard to hard to say. I I think you know, where uh, I don't know, like a songwriter, it just comes to him. But you know, they say. But with me, I I think it's just because I'm on the field like all the time, and I'm constantly trying to figure out you know solutions. Not every kicker or punter or snapper is built the same Mm. mentally physically we might have a learning challenge i have to you know first learn my learner so right out of pete carroll's you know uh philosophy learn my learner and so i know (laughs) how to come to him okay yeah so i'm trying to get that player to respond to me so i try to figure out if they played another sport um, yeah. how much of what I'm saying is being retained. The longer I coach, the less I'm saying. And I think wow. that's where, you know, we're trying to take this and, uh, you know, let them find it. So they feel like, you know, they're, they, they've learned to bait their own hooks. So I'm trying to teach them how to fish a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Just, instead of just creating a codependent player, and that's going to happen from time to time. I want him to learn the philosophy first so that he's constantly like, okay, what would Paul be in my ear about right now if I was mm-hmm. off at a camp and I'm getting ready to kick or I'm in a game situation and I need to get this kick? What would Paul be in my ear saying to me right now? And, you know, so when we get into that, I think, you know, going back to the philosophy and what I hope to pass on to them is, technique 
yeah. routine, precision, but then let's make every rep count. Let's yeah. make the reps count. Let's not have meaningless reps. Yeah. And, and then and let's buy into a philosophy and be committed to it 100%. Even if you're not sure if it's 100% correct in that moment, be committed to it. So mm-hmm. that's going to be more powerful than half into it. Yeah. <laughs> because you're guessing. No, so when we that's get ready, awesome. Yeah. When we get ready for game day, you know, we start getting into, okay, we got to go with – we got to go with a swing or a snap. What are we going to go with? And let's be committed to doing that the best we can. And then that's what we'll do. And just keep a calm mind and go. And then we can, we can remap our plan if we need to, as we reflect, but you know, so there comes a point where we need to, you know, we're looking at the process. Maybe that happens in the off season or Mm -hmm. during the week. And then it comes to, okay, now let's shift gears and, and, and focus completely on outcome. And, okay. and when we f- fixate on targets, then the right processes happen. And so that's when it becomes full circle. And, and that philosophy, really, I take from, um, you know, the sports psychology of a, a gentleman, uh, Dr. Glenn Alba. He's a local golf guy, and he actually works with Pete Carroll with the Seahawks. He's okay. a former University of Pacific sports psychologist, and he works with PGA guys and uh, – He's just uh, the author of a book called Winning the Battle Within, and Dr. Alba has been great. He's, he's uh, helped me understand his philosophy. And it's funny, you know, when you read someone else's work um, and you get to know them and talk about it, you find out I was doing a lot of those things when things were going well. And uh, so, okay. you know, so he's created a system that helps us with maintaining positive thoughts, deflecting negative thoughts, how to help us. You know, you know, when we need to be there in that moment. And so what I've tried to do is take some of those principles, mm-hmm. the way I coach now, is fully focus on our processes, the way we step, the way we set up, all the small things with the outcome non-existent or irrelevant. Okay. And then as we build or shape a swing or a stance or a snap, kick, punt, yeah. then we're going to, we have a checklist of priorities. Okay, footwork is good, posture is good, sequencing is great. Now let's kind of shift gears and focus on outcome. And then, and so that's when the thing comes around. And so hopefully if we've done things right and we've prepared the right way, by the time we get to game day, we're just thinking about targets and all the right things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm trying to push that on to coaches. And sometimes, you know, we always, we, we probably say too much. You know, some of the guys that uh, I end up working with uh, from the college and the, the pro guys, the coaches that call me and say, hey, here's where we are. You know, what's your opinion? Mm-hmm. The, the thing is, uh, you know, they'll typically say, well, I thought he was doing this and now I suggested that to him or, and I'm sort of in the middle ground so I can hear both the player and the, the coach's information. Okay. And so I've become a, you know, sort of a guy in the middle. And so typically, you know, you've opened up a can of worms, maybe you shouldn't have with good intention. So be it. But, you know, as we move forward and what I hope to do is create a system that all coaches can sort of follow and have their players and coaches do every day their assistance, and they can just follow a plan. And I think uh, we'll just keep improving this thing. Yeah, no, the plan, I, I like it. The systematic approach is so vital in, I think, in any sport. And I know in football, you know, you've got different systems on offense, different ones on defense, and it's and how you coach the quarterbacks, the O-line, all these different – the best I've seen are always systematic approaches. And I think that just reiterates some things that uh, coaches that think they can just sort of wing it. um, It doesn't work too well that way. So I I think that uh, getting that, and and I like the way that you, you know, I I learned quite a bit from you right there because it makes some sense. Do you think that, when you've worked with some younger players, and I know you're saying, you know, lately you've been working with some younger guys. um, What do you notice when you get somebody that's sort of raw or, or are you, do you see something in them? 
And then uh, how do you get them from there to where they want to be? Right, right. Well, you know, good question. I think, um, you know, in the past, what I would typically get a player who's a mid or mid-level college or uh, an upperclassman who's already built up a pretty good ability to, to kick or punt or snap the ball. They're, they've got strength, core strength behind them. The thing that I have learned is the younger the player I work with, the more challenged I am by his physical challenges, like his core strength work. He can or can't do what I'm asking him to do because he hasn't developed his, his body the right way yet. And so now we, I find myself trying to develop, you know, more of the player, not just the, the kicking, punting, snapping thing, but I've, we've got to get them, you know, stronger, bigger, stronger, faster, so that they can do the movement. The, uh, you know, the biggest challenge I see, let's say for the snappers, we were discussed tonight was a young player uh, might not have his core strength, but he's put on weight. He wants to play on the line. And, uh, you know, I say it, affectionately that I, I think they have Bambi legs. They're not supporting, they're not supporting that big frame yet. And they're having a tough time holding the postures. They're falling forward. They're leaning back. And so I try to teach them, you know, the basics of stability. And so one of the key components that I'll do out there at the field, you know, because a little bit of game day preparation is helping the player be successful at the right time is uh, something I'd equate similar to test taking skills. And so okay. he's going to have to be able to find that snap or the kick punt that he needs to use that he wants to go with in that moment. And so I'm always asking them to either invent unusual types of things he can connect with uh, triggers, anchors in sure. their mind when they are doing the things that they want. So we're constantly looking for those teachable moments out there. And then I'll try to take that moment and say, okay, let's notice the birds are chirping. You know, what's the surroundings? Like just something that he can, he can go back to in his head, uh, you know, because ultimately we're trying to make practice, you know, like a game. And then we want to make the games like practice, you know, we're trying to merge them. So yeah. you know, there's that balance of, you know, turning up the intensity, but I think there's a quiet time that a, that a specialist needs away from everybody, from all the other players where mm -hmm. he can like, you know, z zone into it and then find the mechanics he needs. And then he's good to go, you know, okay. and then he can be around the other guys, but you know, maybe it's that quiet time. So yeah. those are the kind of things that I'm typically talking with high school coaches that guy might be their quarterback he might be their other guy or their battling time but you know maybe it's an organizational thing mm -hmm. that's interesting i mean i can see a lot of value to that and i think one of the things i would like to do is shift gears with you and let's take a look at some huddle video you sent me of a young man that you just started working with recently and um, this will have some sound on it. it's about a one minute clip i just like the coaches to see and then afterwards you can go through and just uh, give us basically what you notice and um, how, how things have materialized with that young man. Sure and, thing. Uh, and here's a, a clip of him uh, right here. Catch it. Work on your steps. Hi, this is Paul Assad. I'm talking about long snapper Mitchell Allard from Esclon High School, class of 2020. Uh, first initial, initial evaluation, I thought he's off balance. He's leaning forward a lot, a lot of weight on the ball. He doesn't really grip the football, but he got the ball back there. He's a natural long snapper here. After I worked with him, we made some adjustments to his posture and his throwing. Um, you can see on the left where he first starts, his, uh, his back is in a flexion position. He's going down. He's got his elbow flaring out, doing a chicken wing that's on top. On the bottom, we've got his elbow back inside. We flatten his back out. We've got a better leg position to generate power and more energy back with the snap. And uh, the things that we're working on are uh, going to be more about creating velocity and tightening up a spiral. Um, I gave him some routines, warm-up stuff. He's got a good start for a young guy. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of what we're talking about, Paul. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, I mean, you see a young guy there, you've been working with him, 
And uh, so, so what comes to mind when you watched him and uh, you know, what do you think? So that video was from the first time I worked with him. And you can see he's a big, he's, he's a big young man. He uh, probably grew a little bit early. He's still developing the ability to support that frame going back to that. And so the things that I'm trying to teach him, hopefully are going to help him with his other position as well as he plays offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. So what I'll try to do is help them create a routine where they have their, their balance. They can get into the postures they need to, and they're not constantly trying to fix or find it because they're following a system. Now, the, the, the key thing to take that I'm working with, uh, that's Mitchell Cole there, is having his hands to the inside, his thumbs up, very similar to a blocking position where he can be functionally strong versus just being in the chicken wing position, elbows out. Now we've got shoulder issues. We've got hardly anything behind the ball. We, we put him in a functionally strong position and now we can connect the body mm. the upper torso with the lower. We can recruit the muscles of the back, use it to leverage the hands. We can create smaller synchronized motions that are more efficient. But the biggest thing I'm trying to do with the young guy, like Kim, is, is learn how to spin the ball. So we'll start really? with, yeah, teach him how to throw it. I'd be okay if he snapped it with one hand if we're a young guy and then really? learn, to, okay. learn to throw it, snap it with both. Yeah, it's interesting as we're going through the whole concept of long snapping and and you know, I, I talk to high school coaches and different friends of mine all the time at a variety of levels. It's like um kicking, punting, long snapping is the one thing that coaches seem to know the least about. And what they always uh what I get is it's like, hey, I'll just remember how my high school coach taught me twenty years ago and I just do that. And it's come so far with the technology and the ability to watch the video. I mean, heck, when I played, it wasn't VHS. It was like canisters of film, you know, so you couldn't film and watch yourself. There weren't cell phones, you know, so th it's gotten so much better because of that. And um, how do you get that? I mean, what are some ways that you work with some of these specialists because of technology and how it's helped you out? Right. Thank you. So the, the, uh, Specialists over the years in the past have had to basically attend like a camp where they could learn from a specialist coach. I taught a lot of those camps for years and years under a, a, a great coach, Ray Pelfrey, based out of oh, Sparks, yeah. Nevada. I remember him. He literally just traveled around the western United States, uh, probably taught a thousand guys while I was still a player, just working for this guy. And I, you know, I, I didn't get to go to spring break and have a suit with all the other guys. I was, I was working for Ray and uh, I was working for coach, you know, and it gave me the opportunity to learn, you know, his philosophy and also, I guess, learning able to diagnose a lot of kicks that weren't just my own and then help those players find a solution. And so, you know, his technique and his system is different than what I teach today, but it was still a very good system. And he was a systematic guy. So I, I said, you know, he, he did some great things there. Let's, let's uh, incorporate our thoughts on philosophy of how to kick the ball. Maybe uh, what, take what you've learned as a kinesiology major in college and look at some of these other sports and see if, you know, and, and don't be the same hypocrites that, that the guys before you were and just teach guys what you, how, what, how you did it. Yeah. But let's keep learning even if that's from another person or a coach, there's a couple of good guys that, that I respect, but you know, if we can all learn from each other, we keep getting better and we just try to keep improving this thing. And, and some more teams have a good kicker. I think that even the, at the high school level, only a quarter of the high schools even have a kicker. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> we're not doing very good. <laughs> no, no, that makes sense. I mean, I can see what you're talking about. It's like, you know, you look at that young fellow, uh, Mitchell, is that his name? And, uh, yeah. you know, there's a, so you're dealing with him from an entry level. You're getting his body to sort of catch up with the technique as, as so forth. And then you get to another guy like uh, Matt Overton. 
Okay. Yeah, all pro. And, yeah, all pro. I mean, tremendous player. And what I, I have a a couple videos on him. Just I'll, I'll play the shorter one because I think it would be worth there's some value just just to sort of see this thing, and then um, and then we just talk about what you notice with him and where this thing can take you know take some young guys, especially how we can help coaches out in this process. So um, let me see. Here he is in a snapping workout. Yeah, that's, that's a workout we just shot here recently. Matt was out here in uh, in California, and I don't think this has video, so I'll just speak a little bit. But you've seen the finished product of, mm -hmm. uh, of a really a polished movement here. Matt uh, played for Jacksonville last year, had a shoulder problem, and one mm -hmm. of the things that happened that I thought fundamentally was that his upper arm and his lower arm are continually moving at the same time. And he's having trouble leveraging a good pass or a throw between his legs. And the shoulder was actually part of the problem. That, that, that started to hurt. And so eventually he got injured. Right here uh, is about a week before he got medical clearance. And what we did with Matt here is I took a look at his movement and I wanted to shorten up his throw length and create the same release point every time. And the way mm -hmm. we did was going back to hands inside, and then Matt thinks elbows down, tuck, mm -hmm. tuck them in and connect, and then the hand goes to the same spot every time at the release point. So the bottom of the, you know, the six o'clock area, the bottom of the, 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 the snap would be perfect as he just comes up a little bit for, say, an extra point, and then slightly further backing up for a for a punt because mm -hmm. if you think about it, you know the the big issue that snappers have is mostly the punting, and the field goal thing is our philosophy here becomes let's just throw a very catchable ball. So the ball that's dropped by the holder is dropped because it's not a tight spiral. So gotcha. the, it, you know more than anything. So even if it's down or down or up, the guy could probably field it. But if it's coming sideways. He's going to have, or if it's turning, he's going to have a tough time. So I try to get guys to throw tight spirals mm -hmm. first, and then let's learn how to make it go faster and stronger. And then let's improve the efficiency by connecting the body and making all the movements smaller and repeatable. And then he can follow a routine. And that routine starts at the moment he walks up to the snap. He waits for the whistle and the count. So he's not upside down, getting dizzy the whole time, waiting on the referees and everybody to get in place, and so there's a time. So you, those are all things that you can teach and coach, but then drop into the right posture, have a positive thought, and go, and just trust it. And so we start with, again, we break down the processes of where the arm and the hand we want them to be, and then let's focus on the outcome secondary, and then let's just, as we get towards game day, focus on throwing a nice spiral to our guy, and then those processes will occur. And so we're trying to manifest it. So that's just trying to, you know, build in some of the sports psychology things as you're coaching the guy during the week. So on game day, we're all on the same page, and, you know, we're, we're, we're nice and calm so we can recall what we need to do and we can think clearly and have a game plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, – that kind of thing. And so I think, you know, the, uh, the system works if uh, we're all on the same page, you know, a lot of times I'll attend these high school games. I'll see just uh, coaches and players and I hear yelling and I'm thinking, gosh, guys, we got to get on the same page. I never want to see that happen with our guys. And so I, I try to have a relationship with the players that I uh, coach and their coaches. And so we're all thinking alike. You know, because I think that's something we could touch base on as we as we move forward too. We don't want to have two different kinds of voices in philosophy, because now the player is faced to choose who am I going to listen to. Okay. And so that might be a kick or punt or a snap, but we all need to be in agreement, and I mm -hmm. think that it works best that way. I can see that, and I'll tell you the the thing that um, there's so much we could go on for a long time just on you know, the details of any of these positions. 
And what what um, what I'm really happy is that you're going to let us have it's about an eight minute video of exactly the instructional sequence for long snapping. It'll be posted right underneath this uh, podcast, you know, right underneath for coaches to take a look at, watch the video and learn from Paul. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, as, as we start to wrap this up, Paul, um, what I got a question for you. What are you not very good at? <laughs> oh, lots of things but when it comes to the kicking and punting and snapping i think if you if you focus on something for long enough and and you continually are committed to, to working at it you're going to learn some things on the way um you know it hasn't it hasn't all been roses you know we we i, I feel bad for the guys who who don't make it to the next level you know I, one of the reasons i wanted to start trying to reach out to younger players is I know that every one of those guys can play college football. There is a spot for every one of these guys who comes right. along. I probably have three to six to one coaches calling me for kickers, punters, and snappers. I just don't have enough guys in the stable to give them. There was a time when I ran these huge camps and mm-hmm. I'd see hundred guys at a time and I just think, well, you know, that's great. You can see them, but I wanted to spend this part of my coaching career focused on developing players to be successful. And I felt like when you're ready, you only a coach only needs to see a few kicks. Sure. You know, you, you know. use your reps wisely. But, you know, just passing on the things that have worked uh, um, for so many guys, I'll take the things. Uh, that I went through with Sebastian Janikowski on our journey to where he's at. Even as an all, as an all pro player, don't think that players don't have their moments where, Hey, I'm, I'm mixed up right now. Let's go back to the basics and then it'll come back to him. So with a pro player, I'm trying to mostly get him to think about what were, what was going through your head when things were going right. You mm. know, the things okay. that, we the adjustments me we made uh, working with Mason Crosby from high school through college into the league and he he's uh, been very successful and oh. he's quiet still kicking almost identically to the way that he did when he first started coming here and I want to say that was eighteen nineteen years ago oh yeah and so mm-hmm. the philosophy I think that if we look back uh, a lot of we were doing some things right. And I think we're doing some things better now. Um, and I think uh, we'll just uh, keep moving forward. Who knows? You know, but I, what I'd like to do is help more coaches understand the kicking game. Uh, if we can simplify it a little bit for, for them, maybe there'll be more interest in it. So let's have shorter types of instructional videos, uh, articles, things that players will be able to look at before they go on the field. Maybe something they could just glance at on their phone. Sure. The young players to keep a you know a, a diary. You know the, the the modern smartphone could be used you know to help them with little things like that. So I'm constantly getting videos sent to me by my players and from coaches, even on social media. So yeah. I'm enjoying it. You know we were joking around before the broadcast that um, if I look back, I think 22 years ago I was the first. Like kicking guy to have a website. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this this could be awesome. Let's profile every guy, and we'll you know, and we'll we'll start recruiting guys, Crazy. and it'll be great. And so I I remember I got this email from the special teams coach for a punter. It was from Dan Hawkins, a special teams coach at Boise State, and uh, wow, I didn't even know how to reply, and I just picked up the phone and called him, Coach. I got a guy. <laughs> And, and that's not that's a funny one. I mean, so yeah. it was new to me too. And now I think we're in a whole different place where we can use the film apps, the huddles or whatever you're using mm-hmm. and whatever your system is. And it's only gotten better, but let's not overdo it and make it all about the technology. Let's just yeah. use that. That's a tool. Cause mostly the player has to, has to want to do it. And he's going to want to do it if he, how, if he's good at it. Yeah. So let's try to help him be good at it, have some success and hopefully he'll fall in love with it and, and things will start going the right direction and maybe we'll be more encouraged to work at it. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of coaches think that way too. 
So, Paul, how can um, our the coaches watching and listening to this, how can they uh, reach you? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Sure, probably uh, go to the website. Um, it's still NFLKickingCoach.com. Um, you can send an email from there uh, to kickdoctor at gmail.com. Um, or you can, you can call, um, you can post my number 209-595-4277. Uh, it's going right to my, my cell phone. It's not going to go through a, an assistant. So yeah. you know, I, I'll, I'll get a lot of Texas, social media. Um, I, I, I'll use it all. I think I have some 800 or 900 college coaches on like, sure. Facebook and um, I, I'll, I'll use it to our advantage. I'll, I'll take a video from the field session. I'll say, Hey coach, Look at this guy. He's doing a great job. Maybe he needs to be on your short list down the, in a year, for a year or two down the line or whenever you're ready to start thinking about guys. Keep him on your short list because he's up and coming. So a lot of relationships I'll have even with coaches is you know, very positive, if, you know, meaning like we can – I'll send them video as the guys in the offseason. He, now he knows that player is working hard. You sure. know, this is where he's going. If I show you, he's getting better in these small things. So that way, it's not just a guy talking. You can see yeah. it on tape. And now you have a little bit more understanding of what you're looking at, the way I see things. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, we're just trying to get on the same page, Manny. <laughs> I love it. No, that's great, Paul. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you, uh, this is my uh, second episode and uh, it just keeps, you know, it's it's getting better. I, I really want to uh, invite you back again. We can talk about specifically kickers and punters and so forth. And uh, we'll make some time to get together and, uh, and help out these coaches all over the country. Thanks, Manny. I appreciate you having me. I love what you're doing anytime. Okay. Thanks. See you, Paul.